Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather. Um, this is going to be the part two of the story time in uh, my story about my son Brandon in a series of story times I'm doing about him. Um, I want to start off by saying um, right off the bat, I'm going to give a disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional. Um, I'm not here to diagnose anybody. I'm not trying to diagnose anybody. Um, so please don't don't take it as that. Also, if you are sensitive, if you are triggered, if you just don't like story times, whatever the case may be, if you um, are very sensitive to issues that have to do with children as far as illness, surgeries, passing away, things of that nature, please exit out. Come back for my regular content. Um, when, of which is I do beauty, I do reviews, I do unboxings, um, I do collabs, I do mom stuff, freebie stuff, come back for that, those things. But if you are, you know, if you like story times, um, maybe not this particular series, I will be doing other story times, but I want to say thank you to everybody who watched part one of Brandon's story. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and thank you again for being so incredibly kind and thoughtful and caring in the comment section. I do appreciate that as well as I appreciate the support. Um, and thank you if you're coming back to watch part two to this. I'm going to go right into it. Um, if I tend to chatter a little bit or lose my train of thought, please forgive me. I'm not editing this. I'm going to put it straight up. So please just bear with me, um, but I am going to start part two. I'm going to try to pick up where I left off, um, which was with Brandon being diagnosed at eight months old with Mickey's disease. Um, again, if you didn't see part one, please go back and watch part one so that you understand what I'm talking about. Um, but yes, at eight months old, um, we did find out that our little boy, our little guy, had Mickey's disease. Um, it was highly suspected. Um, there were more tests that needed to be done and they were done. And unfortunately it did come back uh, that he has had Mickey's um, disease, which is a neurodegenerative disease. Um, it's, you know, um, it's a very, I can't even explain difficult thing to hear that your child is sick, let alone they're never going to get better, let alone you're going to lose them. Your whole life changes, your whole family's life changes, everyone around you's life changes, but yours the most, the family. Um, and I just want families out there to know, people out there to know, if you are going through something like this, you're not alone. Please, you're not alone. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. It's something you don't forget. Um, you're not alone. And you feel alone. You feel very isolated, alone. And you go through so many emotions. Hurt, anger, just so many different emotions. Um, and there are so many decisions that all of a sudden you, you're thrusted forth that you have to make um and which they began to tell us what some of those would be as i said mickey's is a neurodegenerative disease so basically abilities that children may have developed they regress and they didn't know the severity of brandon's mickey's disease and there are different um, severities to it like many diseases um he it turned out had a mild form uh, or what I would consider a mild form. Um, but yeah, so they sat us down. Um, we did some more testing. As I said, it became, uh, you know, um, okay, we're going to the hospital today to do testing on our baby. Um, we had a wonderful support system of doctors um, and family who kind of, they didn't know what to do, they didn't know what to say, because really, who knows what to do or say in that situation. And 
trust me, families understand that. It's just people being there is probably one of the most wonderful things you can do for a family going through something like this. Just them knowing that maybe even though you don't understand it, you're there for them um, because they're gonna need that outlet and I'll go into that later on in Brandon's story. But we continued on with testing, which was very difficult to see um, because you know, that's your baby and it, who wants to see their, their child go through that? as well as at the same time you're trying to decide what's best for your child um, and it can't be what's best for you it has to be what's best for your child and sometimes those decisions are the hardest decisions for us to make as parents in any situation um, I think at one point in all parents lives they're faced with decisions that they have to make with their kids they don't want to maybe not to this degree but I would hope not to this degree that we had to, but yeah. So we went home. Uh, I read up again, as I said, as much as I could have about this disease. Um, you know, I, I threw myself into it um, just so that I could learn as much as I could and so that I could be the one to take care of my baby um, and, and not have to have other people come in and, and do it for me, that I could do it. Um, Brandon was a happy baby. He was totally happy. Um, Swedish child, just to tell you a little bit about him, had a smile that was contagious, had a laugh that was contagious, um, could light up a room. Um, you know, he just brought such joy to you. Um, and he was just a beautiful, handsome, sweet little boy. Um, who, if people looked at him, a lot of people had no idea anything was wrong or was going on. Um, you know, they just, some people were shocked when they found out, you know. Um, but yeah, so it began where we had to start looking at, uh, you know, different decisions that were going to be probably, we were going to have to make in the future as far as surgeries went. And surgeries are very dangerous for, I think they're dangerous for anybody my personal opinion um, but you add a chronic or a terminal illness to that and it really really ups the the danger to it and we we knew that um, Brandon continued to be the cute little boy that he was um, I was still nursing him at this time I did nurse him from the uh, from birth up through this point I was still nursing him um, and I continued to nurse him, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and we also had decided that we were gonna give Brandon the best life that we could. Um, we didn't know how long we were gonna have him, but we were gonna make it the best life that we could for him. Um, and that's what we tried to do on all levels, medical, you know, emotional, just, this was our baby. Um, but anyways, I'm sorry, I'm starting to chatter a little bit and I lost my my train of thought. Please excuse me, this is very emotional. Um, so yeah, um, it was testing, constant testing, going into doctor's offices, going to hospitals, um, and it got to be very tiring. It got to be very difficult emotionally. Um, you know, I always said I wanted to stay strong in front of Brandon and I, I, I didn't want him to even feel that something was not right. Um, and so I did a lot of crying to myself, um, away from people. Um, I let it out, you know, after a procedure was done, you know, that I may have had to watch that was so difficult to watch them have to do to your child. And then I would walk out of the room and just break and start crying because Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, when you have a child that has medical needs and you're the one that's learning and, and, and I'll explain more later on down the road what some of those medical needs were that I had to learn to do, um, it's hard. It's, it's hard to watch your baby go through these things and know that 
you may have to do these things to him someday, even though it's going to be in his best interest. It's very difficult and hard. Um, but I was determined. Um, many nights I didn't sleep. I just sat and watched him sleep. Um, you know, just, I think all parents do that though with their babies. Don't you, you sit and you just watch them sleep. Um, because I was so afraid something was going to happen to him. Um, but yeah, so as I said, um, we started different therapies with him. Um, we had OT, we had PT, believe it or not, that was starting to come in and work with him a little bit, um, just to try to help him maybe hit some milestones, which some he kind of sort of did in his own way. Uh, but, and that also was very difficult, having people come into your home all of a sudden, sometimes three, four, five days a week. Um, that gets tiring on a family. Um, but you know, it's best for your child. So, and it, yeah, and you're learning at the same time. Um, the thing with Mankey's children, or I don't want to say Mankey's children, but children that are affected by Mankey's, um, they have low muscle tone, very low tone. They're like very floppy. Um, if you can picture like a rag doll, like that kind of floppiness, not being able to hold their head or really support themselves that well, um, that was Brandon. Um, even though he did strengthen up some of that a little bit, he did lose some of what he had gained, so to speak. That, and I'll go into that again. It, it, this is where the story gets a little complicated because it's hard for people, to, I think, sometimes to understand that, let's say, a child is able to nurse and then all of a sudden is unable to nurse because they lose their ability, um, I, I call it to suckle, I don't know if that's the proper term, but uh, that did happen to Brandon um, at, it was roughly 10 months old, he, I, he started to have trouble eating. Um, and so they had me not only nurse him, but they also had me supplementing him with a soy based uh, product um, out of a bottle and he, he was able to do it. Um, and then roughly at a year mark, um, summer's around in there and I may have some of my dates slightly off, I'm very sorry. He, I noticed, started to lose the ability to, uh, you know, suck on the bottle or nurse from me. And that is when our first major hospital stay started, um, which I say was probably out of all of our medical stays the worst because it was the first. Um, Living in a hospital is not easy, and that is what I ended up doing um, for roughly two to three months, I believe it was, um, which I stayed with him the whole time. Uh, at that time, we were trying to figure out what exactly was going on with him, what was wrong. Um, why wasn't he able to eat? Why was he not gaining weight? Um, you know, these types of things. And it turned out it was because he was losing his ability to eat by mouth. And you also have to watch um, that they don't aspirate because pneumonia is a big thing with these kids. Any, I think any child or any person that's pretty much immobile, pneumonia is one of your big things that you have to watch for. Um, aspirating because, you know, you don't want them aspirating. So some big decisions had to be made and it was so difficult um, to do. Um, but I trusted his doctors. I trusted the team of doctors we had. I trusted the head neurologist who, he became more than Brandon's neurologist in my eyes. He became a part of our family in a sense. Um, because he would be with us for the next seven and a half years with Brandon. And 
I could tell he cared. He truly, truly cared. And he happened to be an expert in Menke's disease. So I trusted him and we finally decided to do Brandon's first major surgery, um, which that was a hard choice to make. Um, but I knew that we knew that we had to do what was best for our son, not us, um, but for him. We knew what the, the, the chances were that he would or would not make it out of surgery. We knew the chances he would end up in the ICU and may never come out again. We knew all those, the, the numbers, the stats, we knew them all. Um, but we had to do what was best for him and we did decide to do a, um, uh, a GJ um, tube on him, which basically means we were gonna feed, we were gonna bypass his stomach and feed directly into his small intestine if I'm cracked. Again, if I get any medical things wrong, I will crack them in a later video. But, um, please bear with me. Um, but yeah, we decided that that's the route we were gonna have to take, and we did. And it was, to me, the longest surgery ever. But he came out with flying colors. He came off the respirator. He was breathing on his own. Um, he did wonderful with that surgery. It was amazing. Um, and it was such a relief. Yes, it was something new. Yes, my baby now ate through a tube. Yes, that was difficult, but was it best for him? Yes, due to what the alternative would have been. Um, and he healed up well from that. He did, it does take quite a bit of time to heal up from that. Um, and if that comes out, you do have to go have it put in, uh, put back in by x-ray, which we made several of those trips um, until we finally changed it just to a G-tube. Um, which we were able to do later on in this story um, through another surgery, but we started with the GJ tube. Um, and that was a lifesaver for him. He started to put on weight. Um, he started to, you know, improve health wise, which was so good. Um, and he actually got a little tubby. Um, he made an excellent recovery from that. No pneumonia, no nothing. Um, sorry. Um, yes, I had to learn, um, how to take care of a baby with a GJ tube, <laughs> um, which was not the easiest thing to learn how to do, but I did it. Um, I did have nursing come in, um, especially those first few months to help out with that. Um, and I was very blessed in the sense that the majority of the time I had very good nursing that was coming in. I learned a lot. I watched, I learned, I wanted to be able to know how to take care of it properly. And I did. I also knew, like I said, if it came out to the ER, we'd go, especially I believe the first several months because the stoma can close up pretty quick. Um, once you get past a certain time, and I will double check on this that amount of time, you, you don't have to worry as much about it closing up. You have a little more time to get to the, to the ER X, you know, X-ray to get it put back in. But we did spend many a times going into ERs, <laughs> um, to get GJ to put back in because either he would get it, his hand caught on it, or, uh, you know, there's just so many different ways that they can come out. Um, but he made an excellent recovery and hope was there again. Um, and I learned how to take care of the tube. It was hard, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was difficult for some people to see. Um, I'm not gonna lie about that, it was. Some people had a very difficult time with it because it's not something you see every day. Um, to us, it became second nature, like it was nothing. Um, but he did really well with it, he did. Um, and that was roughly a year old, a little over, probably a little over a year old after, about a year and a half, he was 
pretty much completely, I won't say healed, but um, we kind of knew what we were doing by then with that. Um, the other thing that Brandon began to suffer from was seizures. Um, he did have seizures. Uh, that was something new and scary and again something hard to see your child go through but yes he had seizures we tried him on many different medications which some kind of worked some didn't it, it took a while to find a medication i'm not going to say which one um that kind of helped control his seizures but he did have seizures um and i had to learn what to do and what not to do when he had one i did um and I can tell you as a little side note that when we were out in public and if he had a seizure, I found that adults stared more than kids do. Um, and it's not that I didn't understand why they were staring. It was just that uh, after a while, it kind of gets, kind of gets to you um, because it really makes you feel different. Um, even though for us this was our normal, it wasn't normal for other people, and I get that. But um, our normal now consisted of having medical supplies in the house, uh, backup oxygen just in case, suction machines, um, or a suction machine I should say, um, because obviously he couldn't clear his throat on his own or blow his own nose, so I had to learn how to suction him, which I did. Um, you know, I had to learn how to take care of, like I said, the GJ tube. Um, I did. Um, I had to learn, you know, how to keep track of vitals and, you know, what this meant and what this meant and this medication and that medication. And uh, so, yeah. So, some people said it seemed it was hectic or it would be hectic to live like that or very difficult. It was, but you adjust acclimate to it you have no choice um, and to us every day was a blessing I never knew um, when things were really gonna change and go downhill I, I did not know they did put us into counseling to help us I'm not saying anything against counseling because I think counseling is wonderful and it did help us to some degree but it <laughs> Again, unless you're the person that's going through it, you, you, it's really hard to understand it. So on one hand, counseling was a blessing, but on the other hand, it really didn't prepare me. It couldn't prepare me for what was coming. Um, but as I was saying, um, you know, Brandon was doing good. He had therapists coming to the house to help him with different things. Um, you know, uh, how to use his little fingers and um, how to, you know, um, exercise those little muscles and those little joints, you know, so that they didn't atrophy and um, to make sure he had the proper, you know, at first he was able to do strollers and then of course we had to turn, go to wheelchairs, be fitted for wheelchairs and special chairs for him, adaptive toys or just toys that I knew um, like for babies that if I got it, that if he touched it, it would make a noise. Um, we made our own adaptive toys basically. Um, but so yeah, so that was that part of the journey. Um, and then to skip ahead a little bit, there were of course, like I said, a lot of hospital visits, doctor's visits. Um, that just becomes part of your life. That it, it's just part of your life. Um, you, you learn to go with it and you know it's it's hard because it was also if family members were sick I couldn't have them over um, if he was sick we couldn't go there you know so making plans became very difficult um, because we never knew if we were gonna be home or in the hospital um, and then as I said um, I got pregnant with my second son Austin um, who, as I said, is fully aware I'm doing these videos. Um, he's going to be in one of the videos with me to give his perspective of being the little brother of a child with disabilities, if you want to put it like that. Um, 
and what it was like for him from what he remembers. Um, but I did get pregnant with him. I was an extremely high risk pregnancy with him uh, because of the Menkes, um, the Menkes disease. He had a very high chance. I'm not gonna give the statistic, the numbers on that yet until I double check, but he had an extremely high chance of, of, of getting it. Um, but um, I already had one blessing from the good Lord above and I looked at the second pregnancy the same way. It was another blessing. Of course, I wanted him to be healthy, but if not, I was going to deal with that. Um, and they did do um, the ultrasound to see the specific sex of him, which this is an X-linked disease, uh, meaning it affects boys. Um, the women can be carriers or not carriers of it. I'll go into that again in a later video also. Um, so when we found out that we were having another little boy, uh, of course, the geneticist talked to us and, you know, uh, we made the decision we were having him no matter what. Um, that was all there was to it, you know. Um, like I said, Brandon was a blessing. Our second child was also going to be a blessing. Of course, I worried and it was stressful and it was scary. Um, and I had, most people were supportive of me, you know, having another baby, but there were some that weren't as supportive. Um, that was okay though. You know, they were entitled to their, their opinions. Um, that wasn't family. That was more on the friend end of it. Um, so yeah, but I also knew that the longer that I carried, who turned out to be Austin, the better chances that he didn't have it. Like I knew if I hit past that 25 week, that was good. If I hit past 35 weeks, that was even better. If I went past 40 weeks, that was great. I went to 42 weeks with Austin and they had to induce him uh, <laughs> for me to have him. I don't think he had any plans on coming out anytime soon. We laughed about that. Um, as, but during the pregnancy, I could feel the difference. Um, he was more active, he moved more, I could just kind of tell. Um, and then of course, um, I did end up having him, as I said, um, and they had all the geneticists there and doctors, and he was fine. He, he was absolutely fine. But now our family had two babies um, to take care of. Uh, because Brandon was only about two and a half at that time when I had ended up having Austin. So I had two babies and one was a sick, quote unquote, sick baby. Um, and yeah, life really got kind of hectic, but in a good way, in a blessed way. I have, I had, I still have two beautiful children. And again, like I said, I wouldn't change that for the world. I just really want that to be known. Um, Sorry, trying not to get emotional. Um, but yeah, so, you know, now I have two little guys that I have to take care of. And one who makes me, you know, I, not makes me, but I have to go to the hospital quite a bit with. Um, and we did. We made it work. Um, it's amazing how people can come together and, and rally around you um, and help you. Um, at times when you really need it and we had that and I also had nursing come in to help me especially right after I had Austin um, because I did end up having another c-section with him and I really couldn't pick Brandon up so I did have nursing come in and help me and I had wonderful nurses um, who adored both of my children I was very blessed in that um, I always say that I let Brandon pick the nurses because it was he was the one that was gonna to have to like them. Of course, I wanted to make sure they took good care of my child or helped me to do that, but he also had to like them. Um, and very rarely was there one that he didn't, but occasionally, you know, uh, there were people that he didn't quite like either, but, and he did get jealous when I, I brought Austin home, which 
I was excited. It was like, oh wow, you know, he can show emotion. He's he's mad at me for bringing home this tiny little baby. Well, not tiny. He was almost 11 pounds, Austin was. But, you know, I was excited. I was calling people saying, he's jealous. This is great. Because it was great. Because it he was showing emotions and things that they said he may never show. And he was. And it was normal things. And I loved it. Um... And it was challenging. I'm not gonna lie. It was challenging to have two little guys, especially one that was completely, well, both completely dependent on me, but especially one medically so dependent. Um, and again, there were many times that Austin was in the hospital with us, with Brandon. Um, and a couple times I had to do it myself um, because nobody was around and I had to take both of them there. Um, eventually, um, Brandon did end up getting just a G tube, um, which means he fed directly into the stomach. They did do a procedure, which I will find out the name of, where they kind of like closed off the top of the stomach so he really couldn't aspirate anything, um, aspirate and get pneumonia. Um, so they kind of, uh did do that he did well with the g with the g tube and then with the gastroscopy tube which then meant if it came out i could change it at home i'm not gonna lie that was also difficult um because you're having to do something again to your child that isn't the norm at least for most i guess as well as it's difficult you know um and I never knew if it was hurting him or not hurting him. Um, I hoped it wasn't. They told me that it didn't, but you know, as a mom. But Brandon finally did accept his little brother. And let me tell you, they were so close. Even as little babies, they were so close. Um, and, and, and Brandon did things, you know, to his little brother, so to speak, uh, you know, if Brandon, if, if I got one to sleep, Brandon would usually do something to wake Austin up and then he thought it was funny. And again, I loved these moments because they were beautiful and it showed that my little guy had spirit and he was in there. And I knew he was in there. I knew he was in there um, because they can't communicate. Uh, you know, I knew he wouldn't ever learn to talk, but he babbled, so to speak and had different calls for different things, you know? And he used his eyes a lot also. We finally began to realize to communicate. And I'll again go into that later on, but it was such, as hard as it was to have these two beautiful little babies, it was also a blessing because I like to say they were close from day one, and I know some people may say to me that sounds stupid and silly and dumb, but they were, um, in my eyes. Um, it was amazing, 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 amazing. And I say to this day that Brandon taught not only me so many things, he also taught his little brother and the people around him, please excuse the phone from ringing. I apologize <laughs> again. Um, and I also wanted to apologize for the sound in the first video. I'm hoping that I corrected it this time. So I wanted to apologize for that too, um, real quick. And I know that this video has been a little more rambly than my other video was. I apologize for that, but this is very emotional. Um, and it is very difficult, but, and it was hard. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard. Um, you know, I had a baby that would have seizures, you know, Brandon. And it also opened my eyes to just how behind Brandon was. But at the same time, I didn't ever judge my child, obviously, no. Um, but I knew that when we were out in public, I could feel, I could see people looking and they could tell. And like I said, it wasn't, it, it, 
And I'll go into that aspect of this later, how it feels when you're a family going through something like this or person, whatever your situation may be. Um, and then you have people who maybe don't understand or are curious, whatever it may be. Sometimes it's really difficult. It's, it's really hard because you really do feel like you're standing out. <sighs> that people are judging your child and you become defensive. Um, and, and there were times I, I felt that, but like I was saying at the same time, um, I could see the difference in the, in the two kids and every kid, is, every child is different. I understand that. But if you have a disabled child, as opposed to a healthy child, I think you can understand where I'm coming from with that. Um, but yeah, so we were dealing with seizures. Um, we were dealing with the different medications, um, hopes, uh, a lot of prayers. Um, we became involved in our community at that time um, uh, to get Brandon out and about with other kids, um, as well as Austin as he got a little bit older. Um, but, you know, for Austin, my youngest son, this was normal. He didn't know any different, um, just like I didn't know any different you know at that time a healthy child from a sick child or a child with disabilities and I know for some people that may not be making sense and maybe I'm not making sense but uh, I'm trying there's just a lot I'm trying to say all at once so I'm gonna try to slow it down um, but again it's emotional and Brandon went through a lot of different procedures um, a lot of illnesses, sicknesses, um, would have a setback, then it felt like we'd go three steps ahead and then go five steps back um, health-wise. Um, there were a lot of sleepless nights, um, but there were also a lot of happy days and nights. Um, we made our home happy and cheerful and positive and um, we tried not to think of what the future held, um, even though we knew what it held, uh, because they, they told us so many times. Um, so yeah, that part was hard. Um, but there were days that it was just like a normal family. Um, and then there were other days that it was like, wow, you know, we are not that, maybe we're not that normal, but what is normal? Um, for us, it was normal, um, but we went through about a year of pretty good health with Brandon, um, which was good. He was progressing and not regressing, um, which was good. Um, he was making very good progress, uh, in several areas, you know, using his fingers, you know, dexterity, um, being able to operate certain toys, um, communicating, uh, learning, um, learning if I do this, this makes this happen, you know, that just those types of things. I really think that Brandon could communicate more than he was able to exhibit, obviously. Um, but yeah, uh, but it was just amazing seeing the two kids my two babies together um yeah and again we had a great support system and some of it we had to reach out and look for there were times we had to ask for people you know can you come watch the kids so that we can just get out of the house for maybe 20 minutes or an hour because you do need that break you know you do all new parents need that break i think occasionally um, and then if you add a child that has disabilities or chronic or terminal illnesses or whatever it may be, as a caregiver, it, you know, it can get very stressful. Um, and you sometimes need that like hour break even or 10 or 15 minutes. And I had some wonderful people that who really loved my kids some family, some friends, some nurses that were just awesome and would step up. And again, people from the community um, 
there were a few situations where Brandon had to be hospitalized for different, again, illnesses and setbacks um, where we had to stay with him, but now we had another child with us and they really don't let you stay overnight with the other child with you. So there was one time we had to stay at Ronald McDonald House. That was almost a month um, for an illness um, or, you know, we were going to the hospital first thing in the morning, staying all day, half the night going back home. Um, or we'd have, I was nursing Austin. So, you know, I'd be nursing in the hospital plus taking care of Brandon. Um, but you just, you, you manage, you learn, you deal. It's your life, it's your reality. But there's always in the back of your head, um, is this gonna be our last Christmas together? Is this gonna be his last birthday? So I always made sure to make every day count as much as I could, especially holidays and birthdays. I made them, for both kids, as special as I could. Um, and again, I had a lot of wonderful people, but it was very emotional those days um, because you knew, we knew um, they were gonna be limited and that that's a hard cookie to swallow. Um, I think I'm going to, I know this was a little bit more of a rambly all over the place video. I apologize for that, um, but I think I'm gonna stop it right here and then I'll pick up with part three um, the next time. Um, but again, I just would like to ask that you be sensitive in the comments, um, that if you know somebody that this video may help them to know they're not alone um, because you do feel alone, you, you feel very isolated. Um, there, and you go through a lot of different emotions that people who haven't been through something like this aren't gonna understand. Um, at least I don't think they would. Um, please, please, please be supportive of the people around you. You don't know what they're going through. Um, sometimes you don't know um, or you don't understand. And even if you don't understand and you know somebody that's going through this and you don't know what to say to them, just being there for them is means so much um, because you feel isolated and you feel alone because it's not the normal thing you know what I'm saying um, there's nothing normal about it at all as far as I mean I know there's obviously a lot of disabled children out there please I know this is coming off wrong the way I'm saying it and I apologize I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm just saying families, and I can only speak from my experience, who have a terminally ill child, who's chronically and terminally ill, you go through unimaginable things. You, you, unimaginable. And uh, sometimes people don't understand what kind of a toll that takes on you, but at the same time, I want to say Brandon is and was and still is one of the greatest blessings that ever happened to me who changed my life in so many different ways and his brother and all that knew him and I just hope that my Brandon would be proud of how I'm explaining his story in the hopes that it could help somebody. Um, again, I wanna apologize that this video was kind of all over the place. Um, I will try to get my next one more collective thought, collective thoughts a little bit better. Um, and I am gonna have some of my regular content coming up on the channel. Um, I'm going to actually, a while back, I won a giveaway and I am going to do a video about that. Um, also, I've been reviewing some products on my own that I'd like to do a video about. Some nail art videos, beauty videos, other story time videos. But I do, before I start the other story times, 
I do want to do the story times about Brandon. Um, and again, you know, um, thank you to everybody who, again, was so kind about all of this um, and understanding. Um, I just, again, hope that maybe me putting myself out there a little bit and being a little bit raw um, can help someone um, somewhere. Um, but I'm gonna end this video here. Um, I am gonna put up part three um, next week. I'm gonna try to keep those a week apart. In the meantime, I am gonna have some other videos that I kind of just touched on going up that's gonna be like on the beauty, the mom end, um, freebies, stuff like that. Um, so those will also be going up if you're more interested, like I said, in that side of the channel, that has not changed. Um, but these are very emotional um, videos that I'm gonna be doing with these story times, but I will be doing other story times. Um, if you have any questions or anything that maybe you, I didn't touch on or I touched on a little bit in this video and you want a little more information on, just put it in the comment section down below or DM me on Instagram um, because I always put up that when I put up a video, I put it on the Beauty and the Berg Instagram. If you want to DM me there to keep it private, that's fine. Um, but again, I want to thank everybody who has been so supportive um, of these videos. I hope I took care of the sound issue this time. Um, and, you know, I hope you all have a wonderful day um, and I will see you next time for part three of Brandon's story times um, but I will be seeing you in between there with some of my regular videos so I would like to say thank you and I will see you again then bye